We are back on Morning Line now, everyone. Nick Ferris here along with Dr. James Hildreth from over at Meharry Medical College, part of the Nashville Task Force on the Coronavirus. And uh, we're coming to you on the Plus as well as on Facebook at NewsChannel5.com and NewsChannel5 Plus. Doctor, as uh, we get back to more calls and questions for you, I want to just ask you this. Uh, since you're on the Task Force, and I'm sure you're familiar with how the essential and non-essential business lists were put together, and as we see things functioning in the city here, I, I just kind of wanted your take on this. I understand understand there may be some businesses out there that may not technically be on the essential list, but they may remain open with, say, curbside pickup. In your mind, is, is that okay? How does that work out? Just your perspective on that. I think it's perfectly fine uh, to do curbside pickup. There are a few precautions that I would suggest. For example, we still want to limit person-to-person -person contact. So there's little things that people can do. For example, if you're driving up to collect your food, you might wanna roll down the back window and let them place the food on the back seat as opposed to directly interacting with them. Uh, I mean, I know that sounds you know, bad, but the point is to just maintain this, the social distancing and little things like that will increase the, increase the safety of those interactions. But I think the curbside pickup is perfectly fine. And so, and, um, and, 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 and I'm sorry, I was going to say then, so with regard to that, you know, whether essential, is it just for the, the consumer to stay away? But I was wondering if some businesses, even if they could offer curbside pickup, um, maybe are asked to stay closed so they don't have employees in the store running around doing that and keeping it limited. And I, right. I think about businesses, that liquor stores, apparently, you can have curbside pickup. Um, you know, obviously restaurants, there, there's even an adult bookstore, Hustler Hollywood, that has curbside pickup right now. So, uh, or it's a, an adult-only items. Uh, where do those fall into the category in your mind? I mean, I, I, don't, I haven't seen a complete list of uh, those that have been allowed to be open, but for those businesses that are open, that are allowing curbside pickup, within those premises, those employees should be uh, adhering to the social distancing uh, policies as much as possible. And if they're gonna be in the premise working close to each other, they should be wearing face covering. So the point is that all of us, whether we are picking it up or on the inside, preparing it, we still need to be adhering to the uh, the things that keep us safe, wearing the face coverings, uh, the frequent hand washing, the sanitizing the surfaces. So those things they don't still need to be done, uh, whether you're at home or on your job. We just need to take steps to keep each other from getting infected and protect each other. So the idea is that within those premises where they're offering the curbside pickup, those employees should still be observing those things that would keep them safe and keep us safe. Gotcha. I've got some questions here on Facebook for you from Candice. She's uh, asking whether or not um, testing is available, which could pick up whether or not an individual has antibodies, maybe from someone who could have had this back in, say, December of last year. So that's the purpose of the antibody test that's coming online. It's, it's not necessarily the best for diagnosing someone who's currently infected, but for doing uh, immunosurveillance or surveillance of infections. The antibody test is great because it's really fast. It only takes a pinprick of blood. And what that will do, it will tell us if there are hot spots where the virus is, and we can direct some resources to those areas. But the, the, the main reason for doing the antibody test is so we can see where the virus is or has been, and resources can be directed to keep people safe in, the, in those cases. I have to point out, though, that antibodies do not necessarily mean that you're immune to the virus because there are a number of viral infections including HIV where antibodies do not necessarily mean that you are protected. Uh, there is research happening right now to confirm whether or not they are, but we can assume right now that if you have antibodies that you're immune to the virus. We just can't say that definitively. Oh, and, that's uh, and, one of the and that's with regard to a, a situation where you didn't know for sure what it was. Now, if someone, say Tom Hanks, who clearly had it and has since recovered, right. would he be with an immunity? We, we don't know that. We can, presume, we can presume that he is immune, but we need to confirm that by doing some research. Uh, we do know from the past two coronavirus uh, uh, pandemics, SARS and MERS, that many of those individuals did make antibodies that are capable of neutralizing the virus. 
And there's no reason to think that this won't be the case for the coronavirus, coronavirus in this case, but we need to prove that by doing the, the science. And thankfully that's happening all over the world right now, including at Vanderbilt. So we'll have an answer pretty soon as to whether or not antibodies are equivalent to being immune to the virus. Excellent. Um, a lot of people are hitting me up with uh, symptoms on Facebook right now. Linda's asking if someone has a dry cough and an upper respiratory situation, but no fever, should they be concerned? Maybe you can put Absolutely. in order. What's the most serious thing to say? All right, better check this out. If you have any one of those things, dry cough, a fever, uh, difficulty breathing, an unexplained GI uh, problem, diarrhea, nausea, malaise, please go get tested. Okay. Good you don't advice. have to have all of those things, right? Yeah. We now know that you don't need all of those things. In fact, there are many people who have no symptoms at all, uh, like George Stephanopoulos from ABC, whatever network he's on. He, he had the virus with no symptoms. And I know from some uh, pub papers published in South Korea, they had a large number of individuals who were positive who never developed symptoms whatsoever. So you don't have to have the whole set of symptoms. If you have any one of those things, fever that you can't explain, difficulty breathing, dry cough, lose your sense of smell or taste, or GI problems, please get tested. I want to ask you your just take on what we're hearing from the president and from some other governors and looking at certain states maybe where the cases are lower, that there's actually some talk already of maybe as soon as uh, the end of this month kind of trying in some areas to get back to business as usual and others are saying look the biggest worry here is if we let our guard down this thing comes back with a rage i mean uh, what about balancing and we understand the economic impact and the people suffering out of work and and the sympathies are there of course with you know doing what's medically best well from my perspective if we were to go back to normal or take our foot off the gas pedal for the things we're doing at the end of the month or even at the end of May, that would be a terrible mistake. Uh, we have to do this in a way that's guided by the science and the widespread testing is gonna be very helpful because then we'll know the, the degree of penetrance of the virus in the population. And we'll also have some sense of what we refer to as herd immunity. Herd immunity is when enough of the people in the population are immune that the virus can't race through the population anymore because the likelihood of finding someone who's not immune goes way, way down. We're not even close to being there. Keep in mind that there are like 330 or 340 million Americans uh, in, the, in this country and only about 700,000 or so have been infected. And that's less than half of 1%. And what that means is that the level of immunity we have as a population is extremely low. So if we go back to letting people interact where they normally do, what's gonna happen is exactly what happened in the first place. We'll have this big surge of cases and unfortunately many people will die. We certainly don't want that. Uh, so we need to be guided by what the science will tell us. And part of the, what, what we're gonna be doing is the widespread testing will tell us just how much the virus has penetrated into the population. And that can actually guide us as we make decisions about which businesses can resume. And people need to know that there's gonna be a new normal. We're, we're not gonna be going back to sitting in a theater with 200 or 300 people or being in a large stadium with 50,000 people. That can't come until we have herd immunity. And the way we're gonna achieve that is with a vaccine. So our normal is gonna be a new normal, not the old normal. Times have changed. Let's take another phone call for you, sir, and we'll go next on the line is Jack with a question for Dr. Hildreth. Jack, do you have a question? Yes, um, I've seen reports that in Italy, the uh, head of the, their medical association has approved the use of intravenous ozone based on their experience in using intravenous ozone to treat viral pneumonia successfully with no side effects. And I've seen the actual press release, you know, that was translated from Italian, but I haven't seen anything in the news, and I haven't seen a medical doctor anywhere even mention this, even though obviously in Italy, which is one of the hardest hit countries in Europe, they have felt it appropriate to proceed with this treatment protocol. And I'm curious why 
it, it doesn't exist in the American mind in terms of medical options. Thank you, Jack. I, I'm not familiar with uh, exactly what they're doing. Um, I think this is an attempt to rescue individuals whose lung function uh, has been severely compromised by doing this, uh, this treatment. Uh, and until there's a, a peer-reviewed, case-controlled study to evaluate it, I don't think that, that, that American or any medical doctors anywhere in the world will be rushing to do this because we need to have scientific evidence that is actually working. And you can't do that unless you do a uh, control study where you have some placebos versus what you're doing experimentally to see whether or not it's making a difference. My, my take on this or my understanding of it is that there's so many people there who are severely sick and without having enough ventilators or mechanical breathing devices, this is one of the ways they're exploring to make up for that. Uh, but the reason why you've not heard about it more widely is because there's no strong evidence yet, scientific evidence, that it's actually working. And I think that's the way it should be. Even though we are desperate to save lives, we should not be taking, putting people at risk any, of further harm by doing things that are not scientifically based. So it may well be an effective way to treat this, but we need to demonstrate that by doing an actual human study where we actually have some controls and can compare it to what we're doing now. But I will look further into it because I'm, I'm uh, intrigued now by it. But that's the reason why it's not widely used because it's not scientifically proven yet. Dr. Hildreth, we'll ask you about it if you hopefully join us again next week. And I want to thank you again for your time today, and I really do appreciate it. You be safe, and, uh, and we'll talk to you again down the road, okay, my friend? Thank you, Nick. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. We'll take a break. When we come back, we will be joined by Ralph Schultz, president and CEO of the Nashville Area Chamber of Commerce. We're going from the medical sides of things with Dr. Hildreth to the economic and business sides of things with Ralph Schultz, and that's where the business comes into play. A very rational man, Dr. Hildreth. Mr. Schultz as well. Let's hear what he has to say and take your questions and comments right after this.